just responding to your message or your question right here through video, I figured it'd be easier and quicker for me. So what we have right here is your question on tomorrow's GEX, but let's jump straight into it. So you're saying the net GEX shows positive, meaning we should be going higher. Net GEX is not uh, used really to determine directionality. This is just saying if this is green, it's saying there's going to be reduced volatility. Reduced volatility means it looks something like this. And if it was red, it means there would be increased volatility, which means you can expect this type of price action or just wider ranges in general. However, when the net GEX is green, Yes, you can say more times than not, the market will tend to go upwards. And when the net gex is red, you can see that the market will tend to go downwards, but it's not exactly a direct correlation. The reason for that is we see increased volatility during bear markets. We see increased volatility whenever people aren't sure about what's happening and there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. So the market is not, the, the net gex being red is not going to say the market's going to go down. It doesn't necessarily work that way. The same way when the net gex is green, it doesn't mean the market is going to go up. So just keep that in mind. It is about a measure of volatility. Then we have, um, when we look at the uh, open interest, you see it's lopsided on the chart. OI it makes me think we're going to go down. And then you see the absolute gex saying it's 385. So what, what it sounds like here is th this is exactly, I think, what you're pulling up. So here's our net gex. And then we have the absolute gex. We see something like this. This looks, this is a lot of gamma exposure here. If it starts looking very convoluted and you can't really make sense of it, then chances are it's not that easy to read for the time being. It means, it means it's not that clear. So don't force or try to superimpose what you, what you think or want to happen. That's a mistake that a lot of traders, you know, stumble upon here. If I click this and I see that the absolute gex and the uh, spy is right here and it's stuck in between all of this absolute gex and it's all of this gamma, then, then I don't know if there's really a clear edge to, to, to be, to, you know, to, to take here. And the uh, same thing with, I think uh, we come here and I've posted this many times throughout, throughout um, since the advanced GEX page has come out. This is what you want to see. You want it to be so easy. This is when you run an aggregation for the upcoming week and you see that there's just a strike that just sticks out. You can see it has the highest positive GEX. It has the highest absolute GEX. That's an indication. That's an edge. We're probably going to 390 pretty soon within a, the next few days or so. If you have to take a look at a chart and things are conflicting with each other and again, it, it, you, you can't really make sense or it's hurting your head, then chances are there isn't probably much of a clear direction there. And if the market goes up or down and you miss it or you didn't have enough size and so be it. Take advantage of the times in which it's very easy to spot and easy to identify. And if it's not, maybe run some sort of, you know, this is where you run an iron fly or an iron butterfly for, to, for Monday's expiration. You just avoid tomorrow in general. I can tell you if we take a look at uh, actually, before we jump to that, I forgot I had this tab open here. Here's another thing. So all of this notional delta, we can see it's a lot of red. And that's something I've also mentioned before here. Another conflicting signal. If we scroll up here, if you see a lot of red net notional delta, then price will have a little bit more trouble uh, going up. It won't just f f uh, move so freely through it. Not to say it won't, but it's less likely. The same thing with if we see a lot of green, it does mean that it will be a little bit easier for price to kind of float towards 390, 395. And these are all the screenshots the prices are funny because you know the price the spy is actually right around you know 383 384 right now so it's pretty close uh, this screenshot might as well have been taken uh earlier today but um wanted to bring that to your attention here so we have a lot of red in the net notional delta it doesn't mean the market won't go up and these numbers are not really that large the next largest number is right here at 390 so maybe you know it, it can fly up to 390 and then struggle here but i, I want to i want to uh, point out something if we uncheck all of these and then we take a look at uh, excluding tomorrow or what we'll include tomorrow and then just so you guys can see this as a comparison and i submit this here what we'll see here is this is Actually, no, I want to include, I included today. I want to exclude today because the market's closing in an hour and a half or so, an hour and 40 minutes, and that's going to affect our outlook on tomorrow. So we see this and scroll down. We can see how big 375 is. It's been pretty dominant all week long, which is why we've had this uh, absolute gamma strike on our charts for the majority of um, this week. Now, if we were to exclude this, so before I exclude this, we're just going to take a take a note again of this is our absolute gex. We're we're kind of right around in which where the market, in a sense, should be. This is where I thought I thought the market would be between here and here. And I believe earlier in the week on Tuesday, I mentioned that I I my assumption was the market was going to be green this week. So which means the lower it went, it just made it a little bit easier and easier to have a bias uh, to to trade the reversion to the mean, which was back to max pain, which was 383. It's now 382, and the um. Uh, 385 area but 
if we exclude tomorrow's expiration and now we're just kind of looking at the potential forecast for next week and we want to build some sort of positions here and submit that let's see what we get now look at how much more prominent the 390 strike is this is a lot of high open interest there it's the highest positive gamma strike 375 is still the highest negative gamma strike but it's it doesn't seem so so daunting or so dominant now we can see that there's actually a little bit more uh, positive gamma up here with a little bit of a struggle at this 386 level so for three over 386 tomorrow best believe i'm going to be looking for some sort of swing trade into next week targeting this 390 level it could be some sort of short-term calendar it could be some sort of short-term uh, a long call butterfly or something i'm going to take advantage of that probably with a stop loss below this area because below this area we could potentially be headed back down to this area and i don't want to be caught up holding anything this far into the red but giving it about a two three point stop and targeting something like this is a good risk reward ratio in my opinion especially when you're utilizing spreads but this just comes from uh taking taking tomorrow out of consideration if you can't find much of an edge for tomorrow then maybe start looking at some two week out springs uh, spreads to swing maybe start looking at next week friday because maybe it's a lot cleaner as opposed to trying to you know project a narrative onto what you think is going to happen for tomorrow when it's not necessarily clear tomorrow is the quarterly options expiration the market might not go anywhere which is why it looks so confusing it's the last trading day of the year who knows what's going to happen tomorrow who knows what sort of portfolio management or uh, a readjusting is going to happen there's there's no if everyone's just really just speculating right now and then i think your uh let's see what your uh, other question was here you said um when you look at the open interest is lopsided open interest so so open interest is not just because there's a lot of open interest in one direction doesn't mean we're going to go down just because the open interest is just one piece of the puzzle all of these things are just one piece of the puzzle the market does not go up or down because of one thing happening it doesn't work that way there's multiple things that compounds that actually creates these certain movements and that's if there's no so, so, sort of breaking news catalyst obviously if fed pair uh powell came out and said some sort of news tomorrow that they're the next fomc announcement they're actually going to be you know pivoting and decreasing interest rates none of this is going to matter the market is going to rally because if they're going to start cutting down on interest rates then the perception is going to be well 2023 is going to be better than anybody expected the market's going to rally so it doesn't matter if there's going to be you know some put open interest at a couple of strike prices that expire tomorrow that's not that's not the grand scheme of things and then on top of that don't forget to keep keep eyes or always start by taking a look at the entire chain which is why when you first open up the advanced gex page it has all of the expirations there because the whole point is for you to get a, 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 a sort of a larger idea as to how things are actually looking. We are in an overall negative net gex. So yes, tomorrow is green, but still, how is the larger idea? It's negative here, so we're still in a very volatile market. Absolute gex is still 385, so that is the actual dominating strike right now. It wasn't that, I believe, early in the week or yesterday. Obviously, it's going to be 385 because we've kind of market is up pretty uh, big today. So we're right around this area, but this area is pretty chunky now. We have this absolute gex here. We have the uh, gamma flip level here above this level. We can make it probably up to 390 pretty conveniently or pretty quickly because we can see there's a lot of interest for it there. And then if we continue to scroll, we can see that things kind of taper off. So we get a, a view that way. On the other end, we see 380 looks like it's a pretty dominant support level. This is only a 1% drop from where we are right now. So that's nothing. The market can take that level out pretty quickly but we can see a little bit of the structure starting to improve we're getting a little bit of support being built below us so that's kind of good obviously if these levels give out here and then this level gives out here then we're back in a little bit of a significant trouble because all of this will turn very red and then the market we can see that there's really not much proper support until we start getting out to the 360 and then i think at that point it's bulls throwing in the towel temporarily if these levels uh, ten, uh don't hold which is why we can see how these levels have been holding on for the past uh, few weeks and really helping to support the market because below these levels here, there really isn't much uh, proper support, at least on the options chain until we fall all the way down. But on the other end, we haven't been seeing implied volatility increasing that much. So even though you know these, this, is, this has been a pretty choppy couple weeks here, this 383 level, as I uh, come to... Uh, Let's go to this and then we check out the SPX archive. We can see the entire week. This is this Friday expiration. This strike price has just been sticking out all week, all week. It's just been sticking out. You don't have to make up anything. You don't have to kind of theorize or, you know, fantasize about what you want to necessarily happen. It's telling you 
right here all week long. So just this one measure alone at the start of the week, this is mentioning this or, or, or posting this. This means if you see that, keep it simple for yourself. Obviously, we have the zero DTE options now to to kind of help gauge a little bit you know, shorter term, what's likely to happen, what can happen. But at the end of the day, don't lose sight of at the start of this week, what's been going on around that 383 strike. So if we look at um, option strap for a second, and we go to let's look at something like an iron butterfly. And let's go to the SPX. And you start the week because again, we had this information at the start of the week and we say, okay, so 383 would be right here. But let's just go with about 380 or just because okay so this is a nice even butterfly but let's just drop this down by about 10 points i like to go sometimes closer to the 50 the the the, the, the whole the multiples of 50 so 50 39 39 50 you know 4000 and so but if we see a lot of gamma around 383 i'll personally just bump it up a little bit and just split the difference so go with 380 385 uh, right in the middle is 380 sorry about that there we go 380 40 does that make sense it's just right in the middle of these two instead of picking if i think it's going to go to 330 uh 83 or if i think it's going to go to 85 why not just go with 84 split the difference let's just drop these down and then make it nice balance butterfly we take a look at the profile on this the start of the week was i believe uh the 27th because the market was closed on the 26th so we have right here in the 27th so imagine you come in a week like this and the market opens what is this right here 8 30 eastern time so this is one hour after the market opens you decide to open up a, a butterfly here essentially saying you don't think the market's really going to go anywhere you get this is 36 dollars in credit this trade is up a grand and that would have meant that to start this week off this spread you would have received about probably around 15 bucks for the put and then for the call we'll say um 28 bucks so this is closer to what this spread would have been looking like on on monday and for some of you, I already know, uh, can easily or usually would trade a few of these. So imagine four of these or so. You're talking about this is four grand return for a week in which everyone else is still bouncing around trying to figure out what the market's going to do. And you already know there's a ton of gamma around here. You already know Max Payne started the week already in this area on the SPX and the SPY. It was all in this vicinity. So the market just kind of you know lop lopping around here yesterday there was a little bit of a scare obviously but that's why we had we had a measure for that we we had the uh the 375 um friday expiration spy long put butterflies i think was going for 71 cents and it went all the way up to a dollar uh and three cents i believe or almost, almost it almost it was up uh somewhere over 75 percent or something like that if i remember correctly that's an easy way to just mitigate a little bit of risk if you're if you're scared or obviously just size down there's there's no need to to go big on any of these things because if you're pulling in a grand two grand a week on two to three trades like this you'll start realizing how much simpler it can be by by these types of swings which is the type of style of trading which i like doing or we would have the um what was the other one? The spy calendar, the uh, it was the spy on butterfly, which was shared with you guys from last week here. Once I had assessed that there was a lot of gamma still around the 380 level for me, I had I believe about four of these. This is a trade for this week. I'm no longer in any of these, but this is a trade that was no pain for the entire week as the market just kind of chopped around here. If you're trading on a smaller account, having you know two of these or even one of these is fine and risk $200 to make four or $500 or something like that. And that's just on the weeks in which we have some sort of signal like this. And then on the other weeks, if you're looking for a direction, you want to see some sort of clear, you know, maybe some sort of clear uh, profile that looks something like that on the notional Delta. Everything's just green if you're looking to be bullish. And then you get some sort of massive indication like this where it's just a strike price that's just sticking out it's absolute gex at that point it has the highest positive uh gamma and there's there's you can, you can show this to to a four-year-old a three-year-old and ask them hey point out what's the biggest bar that you see on the graph and they're like that one and there you go that's okay so then you look for some sort of butterfly targeting that direction and just give it a couple extra days 
and obviously don't be greedy and manage your risk well. And it can be that simple. That's my style of trading, at least how it's been for the past few months. The, the reason behind building so many of these tools is supposed to make it easier for yourself as opposed to complicated. If, if, if you see something like this and you can't make sense of it, then it's probably not something that you're going to have much conviction in to begin with. So maybe move on, start looking towards the following week, or again, maybe just go with something non-directional and just put a stop loss if, if, you know, if you have something in mind, because if the market gaps up 2%, that's not something you were accounting for. So you will just accept the loss and move on. It'd be like, was there any way for you to actually decipher or figure out that would have happened? We have... Now, fortunately, ways to go back and actually see. So if there's ever a time where the market does something crazy and you're like, man, if only there was a way for me to know, obviously now we can come back to the advanced GEX graphs and dating back to, I believe it was July of this year, you can come back here and start to analyze certain days on the on the chart and, and try to see if there's something that you can pick up on because it will, it will have, say, for example, if we jump to, let's just say we were reviewing uh, this week and uh, let's go to like something like last week here and we load that I told myself this is going to be a quick little five minute video and I just glanced over at the time I can't believe I've been talking for 15 minutes which means I'm gonna have to upload it to YouTube I won't be able to upload it directly to discord which was my intent which means it'll probably be about 40 minutes before you guys actually see this video apologize for that but there's just always so much to kind of pack in and um there's so much good bits of information here but just showing you guys again here's last week this was last week tuesday we can come here and see okay so this was for the friday expirations how did the market trade we can see that there was a lot of negative gamma at 375 even from last week the absolute gex was 380 max pain was all the way at 390 so what did end up happening the market did end up dropping down to 375 a few days later because this would have been the tuesday and then we can see on the wednesday it popped up here and then by the uh Friday, we ended up dropping down. Um, I mean, this is the Thursday, we ended up dropping down to 375. So you can just kind of get a gauge and then scroll throughout the day. And then as of this week, as you guys know, you can now click the load zero DTE. It's not available for last week. This start would have started on the 27th and the 28th of this week, where now we can actually submit this and not only analyze or go back in time and see the Friday expirations, you can now check out the zero DTEs. And this would, I would highly encourage you guys to get familiar with the gamma exposure this way. And this is why this was created for some of you newer members of QTA. You guys can go back and see how the price action correlated with how the GEX was trading. And that's what will help build your analysis of using these types of tools. So here we go. Another video, a little bit longer than I planned. So I'm just going to upload this straight to YouTube. There's no introduction or anything like that. Because again, it wasn't intended. It was just going to be something I was just going to upload pretty quickly to answer your uh, question and see if I can help anybody else out. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys.